A while back, the North Face have introduced a new modular downsuit that they call the Advanced Mountain Kit, and they're asking 6,000 euro for it. Before that, what was mostly used is a downsuit from Rab, which costs only 1,200 euro. Now that's a big difference. So is the North Face insane, or is there actually some value to it? You're about to find out because I have it right here with me. I just came back from Nepal a few weeks ago. I've been testing it there and I will tell you all about it in this video. And if you're interested in getting something like this, I will also let you know how you can get it for much less. So in order to fully appreciate what it is that we're looking at, it's important to understand a bit of the backstory. The North Face used to be a well-known and respected brand in the climbing and mountaineering community. And in 1994, they created the first Himalayan suit that allowed for a high altitude ascents. And then they've decided to become a fashion brand and started creating highly overpriced clothing with no real technical benefit to it. And unfortunately, they still do. It does seem like they're trying to make a comeback because in 2019, they partnered with some of their athletes like David Gutler. David wore his prototype to the summit of Mount Everest and is still using it. I spoke to him briefly about his experience using it, but we'll come back to that later. I was also able to test parts of this kit on my trip to Nepal while climbing in the Everest region. So essentially, the AMK is just a layering system that works well together. There's a base layer, there's a mid layer, there's an active layer, shell layer, and then there's the insulation layer. And in many ways, this is just an evolution of the already existing summit series that the North Face has had for quite a while as well. They consider that to be their most advanced series of clothing. And what they've done with the advanced mountain kit is essentially used even lighter materials, strip down all of the features that they consider unnecessary. And with insulation layers, they used even higher loft down. So I skipped the base layer because I already had good ones and I went for the mid layer. This is essentially the same version as the advanced mountain kit. And uh, the difference is the color, obviously it's not purple. This is from the Summit series and it's a version without a hood. This version also seems to be a little bit lighter. The fabric looks like it's a little bit thinner. And what they're trying to do with this fabric is essentially create air pockets while keeping the weight down. The material is also what they call future light. I use this every day in Nepal while trekking to the base camp. While it did its job, I still prefer to use merino wool because this one essentially starts to smell very, very quickly, even if I'm just wearing it at home and not being active. So next up is what they call the active layer, although this would be the light insulation layer. This is the 5050 down jacket. So this is also a substitute from the advanced mountain kit. This is from the summit series and the main difference will be in weight. This is slightly heavier because it uses 850 fill power down instead of 1000 as they use on the advanced mountain kit. It also has a full length zipper. It has hand pockets but the material is essentially the same. I got the jacket instead of the hoodie because I thought I could use this on more occasions. The fit of it is quite oversized, which initially I was surprised by because this is just the size XL that I would normally use as well. But later on it made sense and having a oversized jacket was actually very nice. And the area where you will notice that especially is on the hood. You can't really use this hood without a helmet because the fit is just horrible. But if you're wearing a helmet, then this is exactly what you'll want to have. Let's talk about this 50-50 design. So the idea is that half of it is filled with down and other half isn't. So these are baffles that have insulation in it and this doesn't. As the air gets trapped inside of the jacket created by the loft uh, of this, the idea is that it should keep you warm just as jacket that would be fully filled with down and allow you to be active in it as it should breathe better. 
The simple truth is that warmth is warmth and if you're overheating you will also sweat in this jacket. I used it while training and I would hike up and down a ski slope in minus five degrees and within an hour this jacket was soaking wet. Later on when I used it in Nepal I did not have that problem actually. It was much colder and I was moving at a lower pace so I wasn't overheating as much. And this is what I spoke to David about, how he uses his 50-50 down layering system. And he told me that he also uses it when it's extremely cold and when he's moving at a lower pace. Also having the extra length in the jacket allows you to move more freely to have your arms higher up without exposing your torso. As for the pants, these are also 50-50 pants. There are three quarter pants. They're quite short and what you can see is this part just has some elastic that should sit around uh, your calf above your ankles and the idea is that this goes into your boot so you don't need to squeeze any insulated pants into your boots and that should be both more comfortable and also save some weight. I haven't tested these pants because they are actually too short for me. This is the normal length and I would require the long version, but they don't have it currently in stock and I don't think that they ever will. There is a two-way zipper on it, although you cannot open it from this side. So this means you need to put them on immediately when you're putting on your boots. There's also a zipper in the front, which is very good because you don't need to take off your harness. And there's also a cinch cord, but there's no other way of fastening this. So in my little testing at home, they just don't want to stay in place. It has to do with them being too short, but also I think they went too far and there isn't even any space for a belt. So that was L3. They don't have L4, so we're going to L5. L5 is the shell layer, which is the waterproof jacket and pants. Now, the nice thing about it is it's very lightweight. It packs down very small and it has, again, a very roomy fit, which means when using this on its own, it won't be the greatest fit. Uh, it is really meant to be used with a helmet and maybe with the previous layers underneath. And that's when you will be happy that this actually has a very roomy fit. They've also stripped down this jacket. There's only one uh, pocket on it. There's no zipper underneath to ventilate underneath the arms or on the sides. There's no cinch port in the front for the hood. There is one in the back. As long as you're using it with a helmet or with another layer underneath, then the fit is fine. There is a little bit of soft material for your chin and some openings for the ventilation. I've tested it in the rain. It seemed to be working fine. In terms of breathability, my impression is that the EcoShell from Fjallraven works better. I wasn't overheating in it. When I was using it in Nepal, actually, it was quite cold, so I didn't mind. But one thing that surprised me is after one day of really actually actively using it, it did start to smell quite badly. So it really needs to go in the washing machine. Speaking of washing this jacket, they've gone so far that they only have some logos on the inside and there's no washing instructions anywhere. There isn't even a label to be cut off. So I'll need to search for some instructions. And now for the good stuff, the L6. So this is the L6. This is the 1000 fill power down parka. It's super lightweight and it feels great. You almost don't feel it except for the warmth. Because it uses 1000 fill power down, it's extremely lightweight and it also packs down really, really small. Half the weight and half the size of my Fjallraven Expedition down jacket. The best thing about it, in my opinion, is that you can still move freely. You can move your arms up without any constraints. The zippers are large enough to be used with gloves. There are glove pockets on the inside, but there's only one chest pocket in the front. They've stripped down this jacket as well, so there's nothing else on it. The hood is nice and roomy and there's still plenty of room to use with other layers while wearing a helmet. 
As for the pans, they've used the same material on the pans, also 1000 fill power down, which makes them extremely lightweight, but also very comfortable. Now, in my opinion, they did go a bit far with removing all of the features. There is a two-way zipper, which is, I guess, necessary if you want to be able to put them on without taking off your boots, but there's no way to clip this at the bottom. So if you unzip this from the bottom, just to ventilate, then the pants will be just flapping around in the wind, probably. On top, it's the same story. There's nothing holding it in place besides the zipper. So that means you can't really ventilate it from the top either. In the front, there is a zipper, luckily. And here they did have this little clip button, which I don't know why they didn't put on the sides. Like how difficult can this be? And it's really not that much extra weight. There's also no way to use a belt. So there's nothing holding them in place. And um, there is something in here on the edge, something that feels a little bit harder. So maybe you can still use suspenders here. This is the size XL regular length version. I would need the long one, but I think I can get away with the regular as the long version is not available and probably never will be. So let's come back to the price. How did we arrive at 6,000 euro and how can you get this kit for much less? So let's see, layer one is 150 and 125 for the pants. Layer two is 250 for the top, 200 for the pants. Layer three, 700 for the jacket, 550 for the pants. Layer five, 750 for the jacket, 650 for the pants. Layer six, 1000 euro for the jacket and 800 for the pants. So we're well over 5000 euro at this point. But since this is a kit, they also have additional things. They have mittens for 240, down socks for 250, gloves for 240. And if that isn't enough, you can also buy a backpack for 650 euro and a tent for 800. With all of that, you will be spending way above 6,000 euro. So now how can you get this for a lot less? First of all, you can use some of the kit from the Summit series like I did. It can be a little bit heavier, but the price can be a lot lower. The North Face also has their membership club that if you become a member, you get 10% off. And, and an important thing not to overlook is they have a 20% voucher on your birthday. So if it's your birthday coming up, your partners, your friends, you can ask them to create an account and buy this stuff for you with 20% off. So this wasn't a full review, just a few thoughts on all of these components. Let me know what you think of them in the comments down below. And also if you want to have a more comprehensive review. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.